In this video, we're going to replace the flush mechanism in this toilet. So to flush this, I've had to do what's called a running repair. I couldn't actually make it flush by pressing the button. So I put a piece of steel wire in and you simply pull that up to make the toilet flush. So with this toilet, we're actually going to fit a Jolly Tronic, which is one where you can just wave your hand over the centre and that will make it flush. If you look down on the floor there, you can see the stop tap. I had to smash the tiles off there a few months back because the stop tap was actually leaking. And I have done a video on how to repair that. And for all the people that say that I only do the easy jobs, there's a reason why I do jobs like that on the bench so that you can see them. If I'd have tried to film that down there, you'd have had absolutely no chance of seeing it. I've now reinstated that back to how it was. I'm now going to remove the lid. And you can see that I have had a few attempts at fixing this and it has been fixed about three or four times over the years. So this is the Jolly Tronic kit. This works off a sensor. In the lid, you wave your hand over the sensor. That will make the toilet flush. I do have to say that the instructions are a bit of a joke. I'm not sure if there were some more instructions in this box and they've been lost or if these are the only instructions. But if you had to follow those, you really would struggle. So basically that is the new flush mechanism that will fit into the system. Underneath will go that nut and then on there will go that seal. So that goes like so. This then attaches to there. I'm not actually going to click that in just yet because I may break it when I'm trying to unclick it because it is only plastic. And then that connects to the button part, which makes it flush. You also get a new fill valve, which will have to fit as well. And I couldn't actually find the bolts in this kit. I've actually lost them somewhere. So I bought a new set of stainless steel bolts. The reason why I've been putting this toilet off is because of the way the water inlet is configured it bends right out of the wall there it's solid copper painted and then it goes into a service valve which then goes to the water fill valve so there's not going to be a lot of movement in that so we need to ensure that the new water fill valve that we fit is the exact same length as that one or else we're going to have problems so to start off with we need to close the service valve So we'll just get that to 90 degrees and as you can see that started to leak which is typical when you're doing a job like this. In fact if I turn that back to where it was it'll probably stop leaking. And as you can see that has stopped leaking now so instead of using that service valve I'm actually going to turn off the main stop tap to the house which is just there. The water pressure in this house is very powerful. We've got about eight bar of pressure. So the next job is to obviously pull all the tiles off here and fit a pressure reducing valve. But that's a job for another day. So I'm just gonna turn off the stop tap. And as you can see, that's quite literally a quarter of a turn. I'm not just gonna flush that to get the water out of the cistern. And obviously that will not fill back up because we've isolated the water. There is about an inch of so of water left in the bottom of there. We can actually get that out. We can use a sponge to do that or you can use a wet and dry vacuum, etc. So we're just going to remove the water from the bottom of there. We can now remove that nut which connects to the fill valve. So I'm just going to take an adjustable and hold the top nut. And then we'll just undo that. And obviously there is going to be a bit of water that comes out of there because it's what's left in the fill valve. And as you can see it looks like that's been leaking in the past because it actually has PTFE tape around it. So now you'll see these wing nuts which hold the cistern onto the toilet. We now need to undo those at both sides. Luckily they are not tight, so we can just undo those. And there will be a washer on there, we need to get the washer off as well. That's the metal washer and the plastic washer. 
and I've put a container down there to collect the dripping water. We now just need to get this one on this side. I'll just show you inside of the cistern there. You can see that we've got the majority of the water out. The only thing holding the cistern down now is those two screws at the back. So we're just going to remove those. These can be difficult to remove sometimes. But they are actually quite easy. And I think we'll get a couple of new screws for there. Before we go any further, I am actually going to turn the service valve off because otherwise all the water from the house will actually drain out when we remove this cistern. So we can now get hold of the cistern and we can simply lift that up. We're just going to give that a wipe ready for when we put the cistern back on. So the first job we're going to do is we're going to replace the fill valve and because of the way the pipe bends out of the wall we need to ensure that the new fill valve is exactly the same length sticking out of there as the old one otherwise we're going to have problems so I'm just going to measure that and that is 35 millimeters right to the end from the base of the tank I was actually going to replace these bolts but we don't really need to do that on this one because they are still fine and in a few months, I'm actually going to be placing the downstairs bathroom anyway. So I will be fitting a new toilet. But replacing those is very easy if you need to do that. So we're going to undo that first of all. And one thing I can't work out is why we've got an extra nut on there. I can only assume that it's been leaking at some point. Looks like it's half inch male to half inch female if you look on the inside of there it, it does, doesn't look too good i measured the distance to the end of that and that was 35 mil so if we now measure that that is 25 mil so that extender has given us an extra 10 mil so we can now undo this nut So that simply pulls out like that and we're just going to pull this rubber washer off and then we can measure the length of the shank on this. So that measures about 39 millimeters, and the new one measures about 47. There's every chance that if we fit this without that piece on it will actually be the correct length. Now with this kit you actually get a filter like that. So that tells you what you need to do if you've got a lot of pressure, normal mains pressure or a gravity fed system with hardly any pressure so because we've got a lot of water pressure here we're just going to push that straight in and these are quite difficult to push in you need to get it and then push it all the way up so that it's flush and they can be very difficult to push so this is very simple all we do is take that get the tapered rubber washer and push that on there So it goes all the way up so to adjust these it's very simple all we need to do is twist it and then lock it into position and they do have quite a lot of range on these where you can move them to and then you just twist it to lock it so this one needs to be about there so i'm now going to remove this rubber seal with the jollytronic kit you actually get this plastic spanner <laughs> to be honest it doesn't look much good but we'll see if it works, we'll see if we can undo that. And it has actually undone it. So you do actually get that with it, which will actually work surprisingly. So that part will fit on the flange nut. And then the larger part obviously fits on the big nut in the centre there. So we're just going to unscrew that. And then we can pull that out. So we're just going to take some blue towel, we'll just give that a wipe. We'll also do that on the inside. So 
So this is the new mechanism and as you can see it's already got the rubber washer on there and this one you can actually twist it and you can remove that part so it makes it very easy to fit and then when you come to fit this part you can actually put it in virtually any position you want so that the floor bit isn't actually obscuring the inlet valve so it is quite a good design that so we're just going to unscrew that so we're going to put that through there until it pops out and then we can take the nut which is supplied with it and we can tighten that up so I'm just going to hold that on the inside and then I'm just going to use the spanner provided and I'm just going to nip that up and that is now tight so the next thing we're going to do is get the fill valve and I'm going to shove that through the exact same way and then I'm going to take the nut and I'm just going to screw that on there but I'm not going to tighten that up yet I'm just going to do that finger tight because it's often easier connecting that to the service valve before we tighten that nut up because as it stands now we can just loosen that off a bit and we do have a little bit of adjustment in there and that will also pull that where it needs to be we now just need to take that seal and push that onto there that is now ready to go back on but before we do that we just need to take a look at the actual service valve it does look like they've had a few leaks on that in the past There's actually a washer on there. So I'm just going to take off the PTFE for starters. That's probably the problem. It's actually a nylon washer there and it should be a fibre washer because that's not going to compress at all. So I've now got a washer which will fit on there perfectly and that actually came from this service valve which I had in the garage. Now you obviously might not have a spur service valve but what I've done is I've pushed that on there and I've used that to push the filter up all the way and I've ensured that that nut will tighten. Now when we come to put this in position because the actual pipe that connects onto there is rigid we don't want that to hit it prematurely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen that nut off and we're just going to back that off in fact we could actually remove this and fit it after we've put the cistern back on and then it's out of the way completely but in a lot of cases if you have a flexible pipe most pipes are flexible because they normally come up from the floor and what you can normally do is fit the valve into the cistern and then put everything back on but in this case we're just going to put the toilet system back onto the toilet now. And before we tighten anything up, we just need to give it a push in there because the rubber seal is actually getting trapped. So we just need to push that in there with something blunt, then we don't puncture it and just need to ensure that it doesn't get trapped because the last thing we want is that sticking out and getting a leak so we're now going to take the rubber washer push that onto there then the brass washer and the wing nut we're not going to tighten on that all the way up yet now we're going to do the same at this side we're actually going to tighten both of those up at the same time so that actually pulls the system down equally I've now got two stainless steel screws this time, they will not rust 
I'm using the same washers. Simply going to put those back in and tighten those up. I'm just pop that through the hole. It is difficult to film this down there, so basically I've got a service valve sticking up like that. I need to get the washer, put that on there and then tighten that up against the shank of the fill valve. To adjust this, it is very easy. You can simply twist it and you can push it up and down and then twist it back to lock it in position. So I've twisted it and I've lifted it right to the top, well, almost to the top. And then I can actually get my hand on the bottom there. So I can hold that whilst I tighten up the nuts on the service valve and also the flange nut for the system. So in goes the washer. And I'll need to take the flanged nut and we need to screw that onto the fill valve. Just so that's out of the way. And we're not going to tighten that up yet. So you can see that we can push that up into position and we can tighten the nut. So we seem to have that in the right position and by doing that I've actually got that started and it's nearly pulled up tight. I'm now going to do a combination of tightening up that nut and that nut at the same time. So I'm going to do quarter of a turn on that and then on that. And they are now both tight. Like I say, normally this is not that difficult because normally that pipe goes straight down and you have plenty of movement in it. But with this bending at 90 degrees there, it is very difficult. So we're now just going to open the service valve and we'll let a little bit of water in there because of what's in the system. going to turn that back and we're just going to check for leaks. So as you can see that's working perfectly. The water's going where it should do which is down there and if we pull up on the valve it actually stops the water. So it's looking uh, pretty good so far. We've not got any leaks. It's easier showing you this outside of the cistern. So it basically goes like that inside of the cistern. Before we fit that part, we actually just need to take a measurement. So what I've done is I've measured from the bottom of there, which is where it will hit the cistern, to the top of there, which is the overflow, which is 190 mil. So we need to do the same on this now. So that goes into about there. So we need to cut it roughly about there. And what we don't want to do is cut too much off. So if I cut it there to begin with, and then if we need to, we can always trim that down a bit more later. You can always take more off, but you can't put it back on. So we're going to ensure that that part there is on this side, then it doesn't interfere with the fill valve. I'm just going to push that in, and I'm just going to twist it till it locks like so. That part there is actually the internal overflow, so if it tries to overflow it will actually go down there. Before we go any further I'm just going to undo the stop tap. Then we can check for leaks properly. We can actually check that the fill valve is going to work by lifting that arm up. As you can see that has stopped the water. So 
so it's looking good so far. And all the time I'm checking for leaks. So that is looking good. We don't have any leaks anywhere. And that is holding water. We now just need to check it when we flush it to ensure it's not going to leak. So we can do that just by pulling that up. And that seems to be absolutely perfect. So we can now continue installing the rest of the bits. So I've actually just turned the water off again there. We can just flush that. So this is a little bit difficult to show you, but that simply pushes down there. And it just clicks into position like that. So we're now going to take the electronic part. In there, there is four tiny Phillips screws. So we're just going to remove those. Then we move the cover. Then we're going to insert the four AA batteries. And apparently, you do get 15,000 flushes before you need to replace the batteries. I'm not entirely sure if that's true or not. But we will see. Obviously, because I've got two kids, 15,000 flushes is about three days. So I'll pop them in there like that and then pop the cover back on. So we don't want to go mad with the screws or else we will struggle getting them out at a later date. So we're now going to fit this into the system lid. To get the old button out we just need a Phillips screwdriver. We'll just undo that. And this is just a temporary measure. I have ordered a 38mm hole saw. And what I'll do is I will actually make a covering plate for that out of some brushed stainless steel. But that will be in another video. So this video is assuming that you have a round hole in your system lid. So once we've done that we can then tighten that up using the nut on the inside. We can then take the lid, we can then get that part, and that simply pushes onto that spigot and clicks into position. Like so. So that is working perfectly, we can now just put the cap on there. The next job will be to make a stainless steel cover plate for that. If you want to do a short flush, you can simply wave your hand over the center. Or for a longer flush, you can keep your hand over the center. In the event of the batteries failing or anything like that, you can simply lift off the plastic cover and manually press down on the plastic part there. 